All right, Joe Musgrove, what's the hottest baseball game that you have ever played in in your entire life? This is pretty close to it. Um, we had tournaments in Temecula and like some of those places out high desert area when I was younger that got pretty hot, but World Series in 17 here of game, I think game one and two were like 104, 105. So it's pretty close to this. You know, I, asked, I asked Will Myers, it's the same thing. He said, listen, yes, we score by watch. If someone says they're, they don't score by watch, they're making it up. How, how often do you pay attention to the standings and how important is this, this final stretch for the Padres? Yeah, more so now. Um, you know, throughout the course of the season, you don't look at it too much. I mean, we always watch the out-of-town scoreboards, but I don't think many people are going home and checking the standings every night. Um, you obviously need to know where you're at in the standings and in order of what is absolutely necessary. But in the boat we're in right now, the focus is on winning every night, regardless of what happens. Um, one, for making the playoffs, and two, trying to get some momentum going into the playoffs. You know, you don't want to just barely squeak in and, and not be playing your best ball. So our focus is on winning and getting to, to play our sharpest ball coming down the last stretch. You guys have already locked in a, a winning road trip regardless. And I remember the, at the end of the last homestand, you know, Bob Melvin said, hopefully this is, this is rock bottom for us. What has changed from that point to how you guys are playing right now? Yeah, um, it looks like we had a lot better approach at the plate. Um, we're forcing guys to get in the zone. The game plans have been really good. Guys, I get a lot of chase out of zone. Um, you know, we're not giving that to them. We're forcing them to go in the zone, and we're hitting the fastballs when they make mistakes. Um, you know, I'm not obviously not part of those hitters' meetings and stuff, but I've sat in on a few of them, and um, for them, it's about you know hunting the mistakes and not trying to to hit you know the perfectly executed pitch to the other other side of the field and whatnot. It's just getting the pitch that you know is in, in your zone and doing damage when you get it. They haven't all gotten clicking yet, but the one constant has been Manny Machado, man. How unbelievable has he been? Not just this this past stretch, but really the entire the, the entire body of work. Yeah, I I watched Manny his whole career. I'm um, been a big fan of him and. Um, you know, obviously only my second year playing with him, but this is the best I've ever seen Manny. Um, you know, and especially when you're in close and you get to see all the behind the scenes stuff that, that the other teams and the average fans don't see. Um, it just adds more to the, the legacy of Manny Machado. But yeah, he's he's been that, that one consistent spot for us all year long. Um, you know, gotten big hits when we needed it, been consistent, um, been on the field all year long, aside from that 10 day stretch that should have been much longer. Um, so yeah, I mean, he's, he's the lifeblood of this team. Uh, you Darvish reached a milestone with 3,000 strikeouts. He seems to be a guy, and it's, it might be unusual for pitchers, that seems to be getting stronger as the season goes on. How unique, how, how incredible has, has Darvish been this season? Yeah, this is, this is again, some of the best I've seen Darvish as well. Um, and seeing, you know, where he was at mentally and the preparation, not that it wasn't, you know, good preparation. It's just on a whole other level right now. Um, and he's influenced a lot of guys in our clubhouse um, in how they look at film and the things that they're, you know, studying and watching for. And it's beyond just, you know, does he hit a breaking ball or does he hit a fastball? It's in-depth into, you know, what counts are they sitting on pitches? What side of the plate are they looking on early? Um, you know, when they do chase, is it a doubled up pitch or is it just one attempt down there? So there's so many things that, you know, you can get really fine with the details. And he's one of the guys that loves that stuff. And, and obviously it's helped him. He's been lights out the last, you know, it's really since that second outing of the year in San Fran. Luis Camposano caught you in San Francisco, and you guys seem to be really just on, on the same page, man. What kind of growth? It's a very small sample size I get, but what sort of improvement have you seen from, from Camposano? Yeah, uh, he's a lot more calm back there. Um, and I said the other day, I think the one spot we needed some work, and he addressed it with me as well. He just said that we need to work on the um, the sequencing of signs and stuff and, and get a little more comfortable on and how we can get to the pitch we want sooner because when we had runners on second base we really struggled to get on the same page and it took us a long time to get the pitches we wanted uh, which just adds another level of stress that you don't need but uh, behind the plate he was really good he called a good game and the thing with him is like I think last year he got caught up a little bit in and not wanting to put the wrong finger down or always wanting to, to guess right on what you're wanting to throw and I told him, I was like, we've already gone over the game plan. Like, all the preparation work is done. Just, you know, go out there and call it like you're calling a video game. Like, you know, how would you call a game in baseball? You see a pitch, this will go well off that. And, you know, you kind of roll like that. We watch the swings. We kind of react on the fly. We always have the game plan in the back of our mind. But when we're out there, it's just reading the swings and, you know, going off book if we have to. And he was he did a pretty good job of that the other day. For you guys to get, to get back to Peckham Park. Yeah, I'm ready. I feel, Kansas City feels like it was last season. So um, <laughs> it's been a long road trip. It's been hot everywhere we've gone. San Fran was a nice little break between, I guess, but um, you know the other the other extreme from really hot to really cold in San Fran. So, yeah, definitely ready to get back home and, and get some consistent weather and just get back in your own house and routine. Last thing, how was your how was your fantasy draft? It was good. It was uh, it was a long one. We had a fun one though. Um, had most of the team down there. 
I went with, uh, I had the 12 spot. That was my first year picking in the 12. You hate the 12. Did you yeah, I mean, it's not the worst in a snake draft. You get those back-to-back -back picks. It's better than having like five or six, seven, one of those middle spots where you're kind of getting screwed on both ends. But um, that was my first time drafting in that 12 spot. And then we had a live draft instead of on the computer where computer eliminates players for you as they go. So you don't, re you don't double pick. And I was running it by myself. So I was like trying to mark down guys that were getting picked, find the list and mark them off and decide who I was going with. So. I got a little bit sped up there during that one, but I learned from my mistakes. Do you, okay, last thing. Do you have a more creative name than for your team than Will Myers does? No, what is Will's Will name? Myers. Will Myers. Will went the route of the Washington football team, and he is the Will Myers football team. That's it. <laughs> no, mine's is Musgrove, Mus Team Musgrove or something, so I got I to gotta find a name. I got to look through my players and get a unique name. Thanks, yeah, Joe. Appreciate right. it.